Hello everyone, today in this tutorial, I'm going to go over physics options and things with physics in UPPGE. So right now we have three rigid body objects, uh, static slope and a static plane. So now let's play the rigid body, rigid body objects, will move around and rotate. But you notice this cube rotates and stops rotating at this weird angle. It's disabling its physics automatically after a certain amount of time, basically. So let's click no sleeping to disable auto disabling of the physics. That makes it a little bit better. But preferably, what's even better, it will also make the physics area. This is the radius of the object. So you can increase it over here. But, oh, mass. It will increase the radius of the object, but still. The radius doesn't really match the object's shape. So, I'm going to uncheck no sleeping, and check occlusion bounds. I'm going to give this one a triangle mesh. Because that will give my... Make it so that my torus, the triangle mesh will make it so that the torus, torus's occlusion bounds will be matched. It tries to match the collusion bounds by the faces, its shape. It tries to match it exactly. I'm going to do box because, well, that's an ideal one for the box. And I could do sphere for the echosphere, or I could do convex hole. Mm, either one will be pretty good. I'll do convex hole. Actually, I'll do sphere for this object. And I want to get rid of the radius, maybe. Yeah, I just get rid of that radius. There's also the margarine, so if you have occlusion bounds, the margarine will be extra collusion area for detection, basically. A small amount is required for detection. If you make the margin really big, hmm, it's not really doing anything. Let me give this one a really big margin and see what happens. Okay, there we go. It does seem to have a bit of a big margin. And there's a lot of other things, like mass. This will be the weight of the object. The size doesn't really matter, but the weight of the object does. Let's actually give this one over here, this. I'm going to give this one, but I'm going to give this one 100 mass. So then as it comes rolling in, it might pummel the other object because it's a lot heavier. If you make this one really heavy, it won't get knocked back as much from this oncoming cube. Um, sphere, I mean. Yep. But if you switch it back to one again... Goodbye cube. I'll uncheck no sleeping. And there's also these collusion groups, which will, you can select certain objects that you don't or do want or do not want them to collide with. So let's give this one collusion group two, let's say. It will fall through the ground. So let's give um, the ground and the slope both collusion groups. But if we get, so this is the collusion group. These are the ones it can collide with. 
so it will fall through that one because the cube and the torus cannot collide with each other. I can make it so that both of these can collide. They can collide with both. I'm just going to make all of them. They'll be able to collide with each other. There's also this, also this force field option over here. So this is the power of the springing force. This is the damping. So if you want to lessen the amount of force, basically put a restriction on it. The distance is how near the object has to be for it to do the spring and force. And also the object it's, it's hitting has to have it to enable it also. Had to click use force field. Um, I'll give this one some force and a little bit of distance. Maybe also I'll align it to the normal. And make this a convex hole. How about? Okay, so it does a sort of springy force. Let me make this one. Okay, there we go. You can also give another object. I'll just select this object, hold shift, go to object, game, and copy the physics properties, which will copy the physics. So this cube will have the same things. I'm going to make both of their mass one again. Okay. Wait a minute. You also notice. Bam! It will actually spring a little bit further if its mass is greater, apparently. There's also the damping for translation. If you put, turn it up, it will restrict movement. And if you do it on rotation, it will restrict the rotation. Then there's like the lock translation, which if you want it to forbid it from moving in certain directions, be able to be pushed around in certain directions. So like in at Z, so it won't fall. But it still can do motion with the motion script right here, and it can do force field, react to force field stuff, so if you see, it will still do its force field spring, even though I clicked lock translation on the X. You can also switch it to a dynamic so it won't rotate, it will only move. but I want it to be rigid. <clears throat> so you can also do friction, and this will, it will make, if it's touching a surface, it will not slide around so much. It will has to combine with the, it will be affected by the object it is touching, the friction of the object it's touching. So if you want this, sloped have very little friction. Let's give it very little friction. Um, actually, I'm just gonna uh, get rid of the force field stuff. Actually, I can just simply... Yes, yeah, so I'll just get rid of this force field stuff. Let's give this this um, plane... Let's give it a lot of friction. 50 friction. And let's just make this have a small amount of friction. Uh, let's try it for a box instead. So, move this aside, this one aside. Here we go. Let's see. Um, why don't you? But, oh, whoops, uh, it's got sphere because I copied the physics. Okay, here we go, let's try this. Uh, no force, no force fields. Here we go. 
Ah, there we go. It's, it will slide a lot more on the on this slope because it has less friction. But this ground has 50 friction. This one only has 0.5, and it's also a sloped surface, so it will slide around easily. It's also elas elastic or something. Elastic. Hmm. But if you make this one, it won't do anything unless and this object has some elastic to it. So it will bounce on surfaces that have some. So let's just make this one 0.5 so it's not as bouncy as the um as the plane. It's not as bouncy as the slope. You can't have an elastic amount greater than 2. And depending on the version of Blender you're using for this for the game engine, you might not even have the elastic option or the friction options. And I'm going to see there's also linear velocity. This will put restrictions on how much motion you can do per second and also how much how many degrees per second I actually try this so let's just put it one one two okay hmm and if we make it zero it will just be unlimited Oh, you're right. It still does have some elastic property values. And this floor does have a whole lot of friction. I'm going to change it. This box will, okay, move and slide. If I give it a minimum, oh, no, 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 a maximum velocity of one. Okay, it's very slow. Let's just make it 20. Maximum velocity of 20. <clears throat> and there's also anti s this stuff. I don't really know what it does. I tried it, it doesn't really do anything. This is also the form factor. Let's try this out. So. Here we go, let's make this 20, see what happens. It doesn't rotate as much, basically. It says, form factor scales the inertia tensor. So that's apparently what it does. And that's basically everything. Well, actually, no, I forgot to go over characters. So now characters have a lot different. So the max slope is the maximum slope they can climb it up. And so the fall speed maxes how fast the maximum speed they can fall at. They will actually fall a little faster than these other objects. And an interesting thing, if you go to the scene and make the gravity zero, the character will still fall. And let's just make it 9.8 again. And if we make the fall speed zero, it won't fall, but the other objects will. So the cube, a character, is is not affected by the scene's gravity. It is only affected by the gravity mentioned here in its character physics. This is also the jump force. You can make it have a margarine, collision groups. And that's it for physics options in this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.